And then we're racking our brains. What do we do with this guy in 2008? Do we send him to Antarctica? Do we send him back to Nepal? Back to Mount Everest? We, so, so, so what do we do? And we come up with the idea to have him climb the, t this is where we get the big plug in here. Uh, that we, we, we have him climb the tallest peak in every state and do it in record time. The tallest peak. And guess what? There's a group called the High Pointers Club that tracks the tallest peaks. They've got books about it. They've got photographs. There's even an interactive display here in the museum downstairs about the tallest peaks um, across the country. And the worst peak of all is the one in my own home state of Connecticut. The tallest peak of Connecticut is on the side of a mountain in Massachusetts. How wimpy can that be? You know, even Florida has got a better story than the Connecticut high point. Florida is you park the car, put on sandals, and you look for a high blade of grass. And, and that's the tallest peak of Florida. Delaware too, 400 feet. Delaware, right? Uh, John here is from the High Pointers Club. And Florida is 345. Ooh, good, huh? You impressed? So, Mike Haugen, so we come up with the concept for 50 days, 50 states in 50 days, to break the record. And he had sponsorship from the Coleman Company. But beyond that, it makes such a great story. What a great adventure. And what kind of publicity can you get from 50 states? He got publicity actually in 25 states as he went across the country. And uh, Rocky Mountain Sports, he became cover boy of Rocky Mountain Sports because his message was not just to break the record, but his message is to get kids more active in the outdoors. And as you know, you know, p kids don't play outdoors like we may have used to play outdoors when we were younger. And there's Mike, uh, his girlfriend, uh, Lindsay, and his, his climbing partner, Zach, Zach Price. And they, they went and they actually did break the record. They climbed the tallest peak in 45 days. They broke the record for the fastest ascent. And the High Pointers Club uh, keeps track of these things, and he did, he did break the record. Um, and it was by any means. He started on McKinley, which he had climbed before, and that's when the clock started, flew to the East Coast, knocked off a bunch of East, side, um, east Coast mountains. Uh, when he got to Stowe, Vermont, tallest peak is Mount Mansfield. He took the gondola up. When he went to uh, Mount Washington, tallest peak in New Hampshire, he, he drove up and then did a little bit of climbing. So it was by, really by any means. And the publicity really paid off for the Coleman Company. Because so, so I love anybody that wants to do anything outdoors with, with some sort of spirit and style behind it. I think it's great. So Barbara Hillary calls me. And Barbara is African American. She's 77, lives at the end of the subway line in, in Brooklyn, New York, by Coney Island, has an artificial knee, is a lung cancer survivor, uh, is retired, lives on a fixed income. She calls me up. She wants to go to the South Pole. And I go, well, <laughs> um, where have you gone? You know, why would anybody want to sponsor you? You'd probably be a very nice lady. You're 77. You've got an artificial knee, lung cancer survivor. Why would anybody want to sponsor you? And she says to me, because I just got back from the North Pole. She went on a $45,000 expedition to the North Pole, of which she paid half because she didn't want to sit around. She didn't, just because she's old, she's not dead yet, and she's a really feisty woman, and she manages to piece together an expedition for herself, more like an adventure, not an expedition, to uh, the Borneo Ice Station up, uh, I think it's uh, close to the 89th degree, and she wanted to ski the last degree, which is 60 miles, doesn't even manage to do that. I said, Barbara, how long did you ski up there? She, she lost track of time, and I said, Barbara, come on, was it a day, half a day? She goes, maybe it, was, maybe it was like three or four hours to ski to the North Pole. I said, well, you know, you're 77, and that's a great thing for you to be doing. So she gets back, and she Googles African-American woman skiing North Pole, and she can't find any reference of any African-American woman skiing any distance to the North Pole. Suddenly, she becomes the first African-American woman to ski to the North Pole. Now, that's how the media carries it. You know, if I'm going to do work with her, I have to qualify that. First African-American woman to ski any distance to the North Pole, and in fact, it was two to four hours that she went there. But great, great story. Now she wants to go to the South Pole. She might get the sponsorship. Uh, she and I already had a meeting with Colgate. Uh, they turned us down. But um, I'm going to try and see if she can get some support to ski to the last bit of distance to the South Pole. And as you know, uh, well, this is Richard Weber. He's all 
he's, he's set to do it, but she needs $98,000 and wants to leave this coming December on her attempt to ski up any bit of distance to the South Pole. Where, as you may know, there is a, there is a pole at the South Pole. There's Richard Weber with the kind of skis that they use on that. And, and I can't tell you whether Barbara Hillary will ever do this or not, but she already got an honor that absolutely impresses me. She has her picture up at Katz's Deli in New York. She's got a picture of herself in a delicatessen. So I said, Barbara, you're halfway there. Learn more about Barbara at barbarahillary.com. So when I give these talks to groups and they say, what's left to explore? Obviously, there's lots left to explore. And, and one example of that is, well, well what about Mallory and Irvine. As you know, 1924, they disappear on Everest. 1999, Connor and Anchor finds the body of Mallory. But it's missing one important thing. What's it missing? Camera. The camera. Where's the camera? Where's the camera? You want to make your name for yourself? You want to do a project? You don't have to go to the summit of Everest. Find Sandy Irvine's camera. Because there's some thought now that the, the film is in that camera in a, in a cold environment. And it could potentially show the two of them like this on the summit of Mount Everest. So where's, where's Irvine's camera? That's one thing that's left to explore. Where's Amundsen's tent left at the South Pole? Where did that go? There was an expedition that was attempting to find Amundsen's tent. It's there somewhere, or so they think. So that's another thing that's left to explore. So how, how do you get somebody to pay? Well, you answer the so what question. But this is critical. The project needs to be bigger than you are. The project needs to be bigger than you need to do something for somebody else. No one wants to pay for your own little nice vacation. Project needs to be bigger than you are. For instance, you go to Pakistan to climb, and you've climbed really hard, and you're, you're kind of weakened, and you go to a village, and they, they, they help you get back into your health. And you notice that there's some girls in a corner doing their studies, and you say, why aren't they in school? And the, the elders at the village say to you, we have no school. And you're determined to go back to Pakistan and build schools for them turns into three cups of tea and Greg Mortensen. There's an example of doing a trip with a purpose, bigger than you are. And it's a phenomenal success story for him. His book has sold just a few more than mine, but I'm working on it. Um, and it's a great story, and I encourage you all to read Three Cups of Tea. So consider this nonprofit tie-in when you're doing this. You need to train hard. Sponsors have a responsibility not to send somebody to their death. So they're going to do diligence on you. You want to climb Everest? What have you climbed before? Have you taken any kind of training like Knowles or Outward Brown? And what about your ability to write and photograph and be on LinkedIn and tweet and all of that, modern communications? Somebody calls me up and I say, well, let me see your website while we're talking. They don't have a website. Well, I say, you know, it's like conversation's over. You've got to have a website. It's not that hard um, to do these things. And if you don't know how to do it, find a 12-year-old. and They'll teach you how to do it. Um, <laughs> And how to get somebody to pay also? Study the media. Look in the magazines. The magazines have lots of leads in terms of the companies that can provide you maybe cash or maybe um, in-kind sponsorship, some of the gear. You can also read Expedition News. Not much of a plug because it's, uh, because it's, because it's, it's, because it's free. And this is what I encourage you to do. Somewhere hidden, go and find it. Go and look beyond the ranges, something lost behind the ranges, lost and waiting for you. I encourage you to go and, and follow your dreams and think about, think about your dream trip. Think about your dream trip and start planning now for that. 